What we're going to talk about today is looking at how to design an operating system. We spent a fair bit of time in the last few classes going down this path, looking at a very specific theoretical question at a very low level. How do you provide mutual exclusion? And so now we're going to jump way up from that and go to sort of more of the 40,000 foot view and look at what are the big issues in how to design an operating system kernel. And that will get us at some of these low level questions about given different design choices, how do you have to do specific things? But our goal today is to look at this question of what you should do to design an operating system kernel to have desirable properties today. So if you remember way back at the beginning of the semester, this was class three, I showed you this email message from Linus Torvald, who created Linux, having this excerpt from Andy Tannenbaum that was claiming that the fact that he designed Linux as a monolithic kernel was a fundamental error. This was back in 1991, and he would not have got a good grade. This was an email chain back in 92 saying Linux was obsolete. Torvald is responding that maybe he'll learn someday. If Linux was obsolete in 1992, something must have gone very wrong if all of our Android phones are still running Linux and most of the systems we're using are running something very like Linux or derived from similar things to Linux. So either Tannenbaum was really wrong in thinking this design was bad in 1991 or something has gone really wrong with computing systems. So what we're going to do today is understand what this is about, what does it mean to say Linux is a monolithic kernel, and why people think that's a bad design, or at least people did back in 1992, and look at some of the alternatives. For problem set four, you added a file system to a kernel. Should a file system really be in a kernel? Okay, I see at least one negative nodding or shaking heads. What are the trade-offs? First question is, do we really want a file system? Does anyone think we don't need a file system? Does anyone think we do need a file system? Okay, good. So why do we think we want a file system? So what are the important things that we want a file system to do for us? So why do we want a file system? So some of that's starting to, to make sense. So you want some format that programs can use. Right? So part of what the file system is supposed to do is to make it easy to write programs that use files. The interoperation between operating systems. I'm not sure I understand what you mean by that or why we want that. OK, good. Yeah, so definitely that's a nice property to have if you can take your physical medium and plug it into a different machine and have the programs on that machine be able to use it. So you want to be able to have the SD card in your camera work in your laptop or in your desktop or in any other machine. So that suggests that they have agreed on some standards about how data is stored on that medium. And that's true with some disk drives are, are easier to move than others. You would like it to be the case that you can move them across machines. So this speaks to standards. All of these sound like good things. If companies agree on how you're going to format things on a disk or an SD card or however you're storing things, then your data should be interoperable. It's not clear you need to implement a file system in the kernel to have that. You just need enough agreement about how you store things. Um, so really, uh, having an agreement on a common file system is one of the things that you might need to agree to. In order to make it easy to write programs, is that something that we need to put the file system in the kernel for? Could we provide that in some other way? There are lots of other things you want to make it easier to write programs. Right? So maybe you want a regular expression library. That's going to make it easier to write programs. Should that be in the kernel? So maybe we're, we're coming at this from the wrong perspective. Right, so maybe we should put everything in the kernel. Many of you found problem set four pretty tough. If you had to implement that as a user level abstraction, I think you would have found it a lot easier. But it would have not served the purposes of problem set four. You should be pretty convinced that writing code that works in the kernel is much harder than writing code that works at user level. You're giving up all these nice protections that you get in a user level program. And you're having this risk that once you put something in the kernel, it can bash on anything in memory. So it's much harder to implement things correctly and to be confident that you're not giving up some important safety property if code is running inside the kernel. So if something's going to be in the kernel, we better have a good reason to put it there. 
The reason we don't want our regular expression library in the kernel is because it works perfectly well as a user level library. If our goal is to just provide something that makes it easy to write programs, we can provide that as, you know, maybe it's part of the compiler or maybe it's a user level library. There's no reason it has to run with kernel privileges. So none of the answers there give us any reason that we think the file system needs to be part of the kernel. So could you implement your file system as just a user level library and not have all the difficulty of dealing with the kernel, of writing code that operates at kernel level? So problem set four was just an evil trick. You're supposed to disagree with that, but it's okay. Yeah. Okay, good. So now we're, we're getting on the right track, right? So the thing that causes file systems to typically be part of the kernel is, well, it's not just a library to make it easier to write programs. It's something that has access to some special resources and mediates them. So in your case, it was mediating access to memory. You had to limit which programs and which users, and you didn't actually build those things. But in order to be an effective file system, it has to restrict what different programs or different users can do with content in those files. So that's the real reason why it has to be in the kernel, or at least why you might think it needs to be in the kernel, that it's mediating access to a, a resource. In a real file system, it's mediating access to a disk or some other storage medium like Flash. That's the reason it has to be in the kernel, is because it's controlling how that resource is shared. And we can't let a user level program do that because that user level program, if it has access to the whole resource to try to control that sharing, well, then it's not really controlling the sharing. It has the whole resource. So that's the justification for putting it in the kernel. But maybe that's not a good enough reason. Most of what you're doing in the file system seems like it doesn't depend on being in the kernel. You're not using a lot of privileged instructions. Maybe there are a couple places where your access to this resource depends on a privileged instruction, and that's why it needs to be in the kernel. 